turn with us in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 35. Exodus 35. And we want to read verses 4 through 10. Exodus chapter 35, beginning with verse 4, and reading down through verse 10 to begin with this morning. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood and oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and every wise-hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath commanded. I want to share some thoughts with you this morning on the subject of willing hearts and gifted hands. So I was reading this and thinking about the things and, and the rest of this chapter as well and some of the other chapters here. Concerning the construction of the tabernacles, the children of Israel had come up out of Egypt and in the wilderness and at Mount Sinai and God instructed Moses concerning the construction of the tabernacle. And he said here that he was to take an offering. He said, those of a willing heart, and in verse 10, every wise hearted among you shall come and make all the Lord had commanded. So, it was a very wonderful and powerful message for us, I believe, as God's people and as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God calls us to worship and service, and this was what He was doing here uh, with the children of Israel. Uh, he was calling them to be His people, and He was to be their God, and He was going to walk with them and be in their midst. And they were, as His people, to follow Him, be obedient to Him, and to worship Him and to serve Him as His people. And so, He calls upon us in doing so to give of our means and the use of our talents in that service. And so we want to look at these two thoughts, willing hearts and gifted hands. First of all, the willing hearts. He says uh, in verse 5, Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7, in speaking to the church there in Corinth. Paul says to the church at Corinth, as soon as I get there, I can read it. And he's talking about giving. Uh, he had mentioned before uh, the bounty. And he, that, he says in verse 6, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And so, in the next verse, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Uh, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. And we'll see how that verse ties in with what we're saying here in the book of Exodus. But let a man give. It says as he is purposed in his heart, not grudgingly, 
Not out of necessity because you feel you have to. You know, everybody's, you know. Now, we don't pass the plate here. You know, a lot of churches, they pass the plate. Uh, but kind of in the tradition of the temple, we have an offering box in the back. And people can put their tithes and offerings in as the Lord has prospered them. Uh, but sometimes, you know, have you ever been sitting in, in, in church and they're passing the plate and the people, you know, you know the people on either side of you, the people sitting behind you will notice if you put anything in or not. So you feel obligated to put something in. So that's why it's talking about grudge or necessity. Uh, you feel it's expected and you, you have to put something in. You say, no, as you have purposed in your heart. A willing heart. God loveth a cheerful giver. And so, he says, uh, he speaks here of the loving, uh, willing heart. But now, there's two things I want us to note. And, and, and this verse, 8, mentions this. That God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things. That there is a sufficiency. God is able to provide so that there is a sufficiency to meet your needs and to be able to give as He has laid upon your heart. Now, one of the things I want us to notice here, because He said, now here's what I'm going to need. Here's what you need to give. And He goes down the list. Gold, silver, brass, different dyes, precious stones, Boards of shit of wood. Now wait a minute. They were had been slaves in Egypt. And they've just come out of Egypt and they're in the middle of a desert wilderness. Where are they going to get all this stuff? It was God who had placed in their hands all that He would require. Before He asked them to give these things, He had already given it to them. Now, you go back and look at Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, verse 35. Here was the night that the children of Israel left Egypt. The death of the firstborn. And this was the final straw, if you will. And so they were almost expelling them out of their midst, out of their coast, and then go. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed it. of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians and so it mentions just a few things here the, the jewels and the gold and the silver and the raiment So they spoiled Egypt. That is, they, they carried off the uh, spoils. All of these things. Such things as they required, uh, God had provided. Compare the list, as we've done, between what the Egyptians gave the children of Israel when they departed and what require, God required of them uh, here in our text. All that we have, we have by the grace and goodness of God. You know, Paul said, 1 Corinthians 15, 10, said, I am what I am by the grace of God. By the grace of God, I, you know, and, and not just what I am, and, and what I have, it's because of the grace and goodness of God. In Deuteronomy, in 
chapter 8. And there's a, I, I'd love to read all of this. But uh, he's, he's preparing him, so you're going to go into this land. He said, but when you do, I don't want you to become so that in your victory, in your success, in your prosperity, that you forget me. And so he, he mentioned a whole bunch of things. He said, I, I gave you a land, I'm putting you in a land that is full of everything that you're going to need. It's a, it's a prosperous land. I mean, it grows good crops. You're going to have, have good crops in this land. But not only that, said the land itself, it's got minerals in it, it's got gold, it's got silver, it's got iron, it's got brass. All these things. He said, I put it there and I'm giving this land to you. I, it mentions this in the previous verses of chapter 8. And, and then, beginning with verse 12. Lest, when thou hast eaten and are full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And he goes on, he says, And I led thee, and I fed thee, uh, verse 15, verse 16, and verse 17, And that thou say in thy heart, My power and the might of mine hand have gotten me this wealth. You know, that's human nature. That we begin to take credit for the things that God has done. Don't make that mistake. Who you are, what you are, what you have is all by the grace of God and comes from His hand. He has provided it for you and placed it in your hand. Verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant which He sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. He says, I've given you these things to enable you as my people to be able to worship and serve me. That wealth was provided for a reason, just like we read there in Exodus. When they left Egypt, those things they took, there was a reason for it. God was preparing them because those were the very things He was going to require of them. And so... We talk about a willing heart. Part of that is understanding and acknowledging that all that I have, God has given to me. What I have in my hand, God put it there. So when He asks for it, not that we give grudgingly, but willingly. That He is able. That we have all sufficiency in all things. So these people gave gold and silver and everything uh, enough that was uh, sufficient for the building of the tabernacle and much left over that they could keep for themselves. God gives us a sufficiency. Um, in those things, we need to remember that it is God that giveth us the strength, the ability to get that wealth. He has blessed this nation, but in the land, it's a good land. And so there was all that, the, the potential there for that prosperity God has given to us. And God has enabled us to prosper. Secondly, I want us to notice too that according to our text, it was God who put into their hearts the desire 
to give. Exodus 35, 21. Notice Exodus 35, verse 21. And they came. Everyone whose heart stirred him up. And everyone whom his spirit made willing. So their hearts were stirred to give at, at, at the idea of that God was asking these things from them and their hearts were stirred to give. Well, what stirred their heart? <laughs> God's Spirit. God's Spirit made willing. Every, and they came, every one, as many as, Matter of fact, I was surprised because over the New Testament I find that phrase and I've always said, you know, I love that phrase whenever I come across that. Look at, at that phrase and what's on either side of it. As many as. And we find that here in the, in the book of Exodus. Uh, there are hearts stirred them to give. There was the desire to give because God's Spirit made them willing. Look, if you will, because I believe the psalmist here is speaking of this very truth, acknowledging this very truth. Psalm 110. A psalm of David. Psalm 110, verse 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Thy people. Not talking about the world. You know, Egypt was willing to let them go when God got done with them. That was one thing. Now, that was different. They, they did so grudgingly. They did so out of, because they was compelled to do so because of the plagues that had been laid upon them. God's people are willing in the day of His power. God's Spirit. Now we need to learn what that means. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Exodus 35, 5 We read, Whosoever is of a willing heart. A lot of people. Whosoever is of a willing heart. Whosoever will. Revelation 22 17. Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. It's man's will. Who's willing? Thy people will be willing in the day of thy power. They were willing because God's Spirit made them willing. And when He said, made them, He didn't force them to be willing. But He created the conditions within their heart that allowed them to be willing. That new nature, that new man which is created in the image and likeness of God, which is created in, in uh, true holiness. God's Spirit made them willing. We need to understand that phrase, whosoever will. We need to understand it in the light of what the Scripture says. Whosoever is of a willing heart, verse 5, verse 21 they came, everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whom his spirit made willing. I'm not talking about the spirit of man, but the spirit of God made willing. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13, we see this truth expressed again in the New Testament. Paul writing to the Philippians verse 12 he says 
work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So there's a man that we was talking about this this morning in Sunday school class, about the, the difference between man's responsibility and God's sovereignty. And they do harmonize in God. Sometimes we have a hard time getting our minds and understanding wrapped around those truths, uh, but they do harmonize. And, and, and in the end, it, it works out, just like God said it would. But we see here, he, he, he exhorts him, says, you need, you know, you're saved, you have this salvation, you have this new life in Jesus Christ, you need to work that out. You're not working in order to obtain it, you already have it. If you didn't have it, you couldn't work it out. But that which is in were to manifest outwardly. You know, repentance is something that is within. But how do you show repentance? Well, you bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. That's working it out. Making it outwardly manifest. And so he's admonishing here, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13, 4. It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So we see, uh, you're talking about His good pleasure. Both, look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, 9, 11. And that, that'll explain His good pleasure. Uh, well, okay. I mentioned it. I don't go over there and read it. You'll forget the references and, and won't look it up. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. Verse 9 Having made known unto us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure which He had purposed in Himself. And verse 11 in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. So in Philippians, when Paul writes there, it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure, which He hath purposed in Himself. Um, Verse 21 in our text. And they came and said, and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for His service and for the holy garments. They brought the Lord's offering. As we said, the Lord had provided to them everything that He required of them. And verse 22, they came, and here's where we see that. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing hearted. How many came? As many as were willing hearted. Well, who was willing hearted? Whom his spirit made willing. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord. They were willing hearted. They brought what they had. With whom, would, notice it says, with whom was found. Uh, in verse 23 and verse 24, it said, with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and so on. Verse 24, with whom was found Shittim wood or any work to offer. So, what it's saying, you know, everybody didn't have silver and gold, but those that had brought that. Those that had the dyes, those who had the, the cloth, the materials, they brought that. Those that had the Shittim wood, they brought that. Those who had the precious stones, they brought that. Uh, with whom it was found. Notice 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Um, as we've already read. 
said, uh, every man according as he has purposed in his heart. There was another place where he says it's not according to, you know, it's according to what a man hath, not according to what he hath not. You give according to what you have. You know, uh, and so we see that truth here. With whom it was found. Uh, God had provided, then they brought, and they brought a, a willing offering. Now the second thing, the other half of this equation, is the gifted hands. You know, we, we bring to the Lord of our means, those things, material things that God has blessed us with as it may be required. As God has prospered us, uh, then we are to give. But then what do you do with it? They had gold, they had silver, they had precious stones, they had wood, they had the, the linen, they had the dyed threads. Uh, now what do you do with all this? It requires people with talent. People with skill. To put it together. And so we see in Exodus 35 verse 30. Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. And that word workmanship. In other words, it was he didn't know how to, just how to dig ditches. This was skilled labor, craftsmanship. Uh, and it talks about cunning uh, uh, workmen. That is a, with an artistic. I like that one. Uh, but these. There were certain men said, and to devise curious works. That is art, to design artistic work. To work in gold and silver and in brass and in the cutting of stones. You know, these occupations are skilled crafts. They're artisans, that is, they're skilled craftsmen in particular types of work. Notice verse, and he had put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Hishmach of the tribe of Dan. Then hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cutting, cunning workman and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen and of the weaver, even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. And so God had blessed and put in their midst skilled craftsmen. Men who were skilled in the very things that were going to be needed. So not only had God blessed uh, some, as many as, with whom was found, all of these material things, but He had also placed in their midst men that had talent in these various fields. And where did they get these talents? God put it there. God put in their heart this knowledge and this wisdom and so on. And again, uh, these artisans and those skilled in artistic design and craftsmanship, 
It's a God-given talent or aptitude. You know, some people, you, you, if you're around them, you can tell, well, they're just gifted in this area. They just have a, an aptitude for that. The aptitude is something that is within, that is created within us. It is a God-given talent. Psalm 139. Verse 14. We're familiar with this. So I will praise thee. This is another Psalm of David. David says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Now David had certain talents. He was a skilled musician. Wasn't he? Now we, we would consider that a talent. He had a skill in writing poetry and setting it to music. Where did that talent come from? David said, I know in my own soul that God put it there. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now we understand something of how we are made. Certain things, not just hair color, eye color, bone structure and density and, and our stature is all determined by our DNA. But we have come to realize too that there are certain heredit, inherited traits, aptitudes as well that is passed on in our DNA. And if you read what David says here, he is describing the development of the fetus in the womb and the DNA. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members was written. Their DNA. All my members. My hair color, my eye color. You know, he is of a ruddy complexion. That was in his DNA. And it was written in God's book. And so that aptitude, and when you think, what goes into your DNA? My father, my mother, and, and that DNA that's passed down through those generations coming in from both sides, and the exact way that certain traits line up. And God controlled every one of them to make you the person you are. Including those aptitudes and those talents that you possess. They're God-given. But there's another sign of that as well. You're talking about someone that has an aptitude for it, but where did they become skilled? Because skill requires training, and experience doesn't it? They were slaves in the middle of the desert wilderness and they'd been in bondage in Egypt. So where did they get the skill? Well, those Egyptians weren't dummies. They were skilled in the arts. And the Hebrews were their servants whom they oversaw in all that work. I, I believe those Hebrews was doing more than just making bricks. You know, that's, that's one of the things, the thing that most prominently mentioned in the book of Exodus was the, the brick making. But I, they were slaves. The, the Egyptians 
we got all these, this slave labor, this cheap labor, let's put it to use. There were artesians among the Egyptians. And as in any business, you look for people that have a, an aptitude for certain things and you put them into that position and you train them. What I'm saying is in this world, we go to school, we go to college, we get jobs. And we are trained. And, and so we develop those skills in life. And our life experiences help to develop and bring out those skills and talents that we have and give us opportunity to exercise them and to practice and, and to use them and to hone those skills. And then God saves you and puts you in a church. Why? Now he said, every member in the body as it hath pleased him. Not everyone's the head. Also need feet. Not everyone's the eye. Also need ears. And so on. So not only do we see that God the willing hearts to give, but those gifted hands are of God also. He prepared people in particular, and not just men, but there was women mentioned also that was gifted in weaving. I don't want to leave you women out. Put you in the body also. You have things that you can do. You know, and, and, and we, we think of certain things, you know, cooking. I was on, on Facebook, there's a, a picture of this boy sitting there in a the plate and he had some fruits and vegetables on it. And, you know, and said, he tried to eat healthy. But then the Lord puts us in a Baptist church and it has this big spread, you know. So we, we think of that, you know, the women... But not just women are gifted in cooking either. We, Brother Ben here is gifted in, in cooking as well. Uh, so, so we see that both men and women have certain talents and certain abilities that God has put there. He's given you though the aptitude that is in your DNA, in your makeup, and then through life, He's brought those things out and, and, and given you a skill in certain areas. And then He saved you and He's put you in a church and in a particular church for a reason. Because He's going to need those talents in that church. Well, the wisdom, the power, the goodness of God in the things that he does. Willing hearts and gifted hands. Each of us bring many skills and talents into the Lord's service. They were given to you not just for your own gratification and survival, but for God's service. And so, as we make that application uh, from the children of Israel here in the building of the tabernacle uh, into the New Testament and to our place in the Lord's church, you know, 1 Timothy 3.15, he said, that you might know how thou ought to behave thyself. And that's what was, he's talking about back there. They were behaving themselves. That is, they, the willing heart and, and the gifted uh, hands of being brought together to accomplish God's service in the building of the tabernacle. That you might know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church now of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. This is our tabernacle that we're called to build, if you will. And as we pointed out there in 1 Corinthians 12, and he talks about these different things, that God had placed us in the church as it has pleased Him. And He's given us these talents that together we might edify and build one another up. Ephesians chapter 4. 
And I believe this will kind of tie all this together. Ephesians chapter 4, and notice verse 7. 7 and 8 said, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. See, every one of us is given something. And is it by the grace of God? According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Uh, verse 11 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He says, till we all come in the unity of the faith. That's one of the things that in the tabernacle is a beautiful picture. And how it all came together. And how it was all fitly framed together. And it was all joined together. Uh, when it was finished, because of all that was given and because of all the skill, uh, labor that went into it, by the grace of God, He brought them together and, and, it, and it came together there. And so that we see this in a spiritual sense because we are living stones and we are the, uh, like those boards of the tabernacle and so on. Said, so till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body Fitly joined together. And again, this is talking about a local church. This, it, the type breaks down when you try to apply this to all believers. It just, it, it won't work. But he's talking about a particular body, a local New Testament church. It said, from whom, that is from Christ, the whole body fitly joined together. Compacted by that which every joint supplieth. See, every, every member is supplying something. And that's why it helps hold it all together. According, you know, how is it that we supply it? According to the effectual working in the measure of every part. That is, as God has the measure that He's given to you, both in, in material things, the, the willing heart, or the gifted hands, the talent uh, that we ha possess, it, it we have by cause of His effectual working in every part, to the making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. What a picture! It takes willing hand, uh, willing hearts and gifted hands in the service of the Lord. Willing hearts and gifted hands. You have a willing heart. Is your heart stirred to serve the Lord? To give of your substance and to give of your talent you have the gifted hands, the talent. Uh, we, all that we are and all that we have, we have with the grace of God. And we owe it to Him. And He has provided it to us so that when He requires it, it will be there. Let us stand together.